Hello everyone, that should be today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. So today's second video, uh, which takes around the 13th of May. Um, and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended uh, GFS and also ECM ensembles, which run to around a couple of weeks. That's so obviously going to take us into the second half of uh, the month. Uh, just say that JMA Friday has been released. That's your month ahead look ahead with the Japanese and CFS V2 models. And uh, it looks like uh, we've got some splits, some disagreements between JMA and the CFS in terms of what's going to happen as we go through May. So as ever, it's been a very uncertain period over the past few weeks. It looks like that. And certainly continues. Have a look at JMA Friday, see what's going on. Uh, there. The final, seventh and final update for the uh, May Day Bank Holiday Weekend is going to be with you this evening. I uh, just say that if you enter the competition at uh, Gas Weathers, we run a competition uh, where we're giving, uh, giving it away a temperature and a humidity forecast station uh, with metcheck.co.uk. Uh, we gave that prize away on Easter Sunday, and for two weeks, uh, we was running an exclusive uh, discount code for all entrants. Um, so you can get 15% off at metcheck.co.uk if you entered the, uh, the prize draw, if you entered the competition. Uh, that's going to expire, that discount code will expire on Sunday. So you've just got a couple of days left to uh, use your official uh, Gazworthy's discount code at metcheck.co.uk. The uh, discount code is GWV, uh, GWV15, GWV15. Uh, that will entitle you to 15% off with metcheck.co.uk. Any product there. Uh, you get 15% off up until Sunday. But after Sunday, that discount code will expire. So if you'd like to buy anything at metcheck.co.uk, then uh, you've got until the uh, until the end of Sunday to use your discount code. After that, uh, it expires. Big thank you to everybody who entered the competition. Uh, by the way, this is just our way of saying thank you to all of those people who entered the uh, competition. Right, so let's get on with the video. And we've got some heavy showers moving southwards at the moment. And that's on a cold front. So this radar picture from uh, the Weather Outlook. You can see we've got this band of quite um, heavy showers moving through parts of Wales, the Midlands and East Anglia. Also showers coming into the north. But that's within a different air mass. That's within a northerly wind. And so it's turning a lot colder up there. And some of those showers could be turning wintry now in the far north of Scotland. If we overlay the temperature, uh, actually, let's overlay the dew point. You'll be able to see from the dew point the change behind that cold front. So you see how the dew points are dropping down to or even below freezing uh, now across parts of northern England and up into Scotland. Whereas down across the bunch of England and Wales, the dew point is still holding up well above freezing. Let's just refresh the page uh, a moment. And then we'll be able to show you the uh, surface temperatures. So the air temperatures, I should say. So again, you see the divide. Down in the south, we've got the air temperature hovering at around sort of mid teens Celsius, especially down towards southwestern parts of England. But behind those uh, showers coming through, Wales, the Midlands and East Anglia at the moment, you see the air temperature drops into single digits quite widely across Scotland and Northern England. Let's just say there's any lightning uh, flashing away. So if we uh, go to there and refresh the page again, get rid of the temperatures and let's just have a look and see whether there is any lightning flashing away. So there's no lightning at the moment, but the showers could turn a little bit thundery as they get further down into south. These showers already are quite heavy through the Midlands and East Anglia, and as they push southwards, uh, they could turn um, a little bit thundery. Last week, look at his precipitation type, and you see we are, the shells are turning wintry now across the northern parts of Scotland. That will be primarily uh, snow over the hills and mountains, sleet, hail, maybe snowflakes are mixed in down at lower levels. But as we go through tonight into tomorrow, we could see snow even coming down to low levels across parts of northern and east Scotland. This is a real Arctic northerly uh, that we've got setting in for the next day or so. And perhaps more significantly than that will be nighttime frost uh, risk. We might see temperature go down to minus five or minus six in the Scottish glens, can you believe? Um, on Saturday night, I think the coldest night will be Saturday night into Sunday morning as the uh, as the wind falls light. 
So I'd not be surprised to see temperature going down, possibly as low as minus six in some Scottish trains. Not sure if that would be a record-breaking cold temperature for May. It's possible it would be. Certainly by date, I would have thought. Um, so uh, we may well be seeing some cold records being broken, actually, over the next uh, couple of nights, or certainly Saturday night could do it. So quite unusual to break cold records, of course, all the time we hear about warm records being broken, warm temperature records, but we might get some record-breaking cold weather. And also this could be one of the coldest May Day back holiday weekends as well for a very, very long time too. So um, all in complete contrast, of course, to what happened over Easter when we had those very warm temperatures indeed. Well, this is how the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles are looking for the next couple of weeks. We're in Aberdeen uh, today, so well in line for that northerly wind. You're going to feel that northerly up there in Aberdeen. I'm sure of that you probably already are, actually. Uh, so, well, you see significantly cold and average at the moment, and staying cold and average really through the bank holiday weekend into next week. Through next week, only very gradually do we see those ensembles lifting up. But it's not really till we get to the middle part of May that we return to or possibly go a little bit above average. But at the same time, it turns more unsettled. So with all this cold stuff, cold temperatures that we've got here over the rest of the weekend into next week, there's a lot of dry weather on off with that. It could be wintry showers, of course, but there's a lot of dry weather taking us through the bank holiday weekend. But through next week, it turns increasingly unsettled. Remember, this is Aberdeen, so it's east of Scotland. It's not... Uh, particularly exposed to the Atlantic. So um, if we looked at somewhere like Manchester, I suspect it would look quite a bit wetter than this. But uh, it does give a good suggestion that through next week it's turning more unsettled. And that takes us into the middle part of May uh, as well. So as the temperatures recover, it also starts to turn more unsettled with bouts of rain moving in from off the Atlantic. Look at that temperature anomaly from the 3rd through to the 11th of uh, May. Really, really cool. Actually, you would say cold. Colder than average, not just for the UK and Ireland, but through most parts of uh, Europe as well. So widely, we're talking about temperature anomalies between 2 and 6 degrees below average. Some places are going down kind of like 6 to 8 degrees below average, particularly across parts of Norway and also across Alpine uh, sort of areas but uh, it is a very very cool week coming up quite obviously and that does include the UK as well where we're kind of like um, sort of two to four degrees below average quite widely and Ireland is as well and precipitation on is looking a little bit on the wetter than average side too so this is looking like a substantially uh, a substantial pattern change you talked about this in videos over the past couple of days it's a really really big pattern change but we've had for quite a long while through this early part of May to something not only a lot cooler or colder, but also a lot more unsettled as well. So this is how the GFS is looking for Monday. High pressure's up there over Greenland. So we've got a blocking area of high pressure in place over Greenland. Low pressure in a, as a trough in the 500 millibar flow is sinking through, uh, through Scandinavia, and that's bringing the winds in from a northerly direction. And then through next week, well, the high pressure gradually releases its influence, but it's still there over green. We start to run these areas of low pressure in underneath it. This is always the danger with northern blocking at any time of year, really, but particularly in the summer when there's more energy available within the atmosphere in the Atlantic. Um, if you get high pressure stuck over there around green and ice, you will tend to run low pressure and the jet stream in underneath it and that's what's going on there uh so as i've explained in another video so a lot of our wettest summers like i'm sure you remember 2007 and the last one was 2012 a lot of the wettest uh poorest summers they often have a certainly an element anyway of northern blocking within them they'll often have high pressure somewhere over greenland or towards greenland and that will tend to force a low pressure underneath it in the summer because there's always much more atmosphere uh, energy available in the atmosphere because it's a warmer time of year that can often result in uh, very wet conditions 
it's still early days, so we're not saying that that's what we're going to have for the summer. But obviously, if we was to see this blocking signal continuing into June and July, then that would be quite uh, concerning for our summer prospects. But anyway, back to next week. Low pressure's coming in underneath it, underneath the blocking area of high pressure, bringing significant bouts of wet weather across the country through the course of next week. And we keep that area of low pressure then centred almost over top of the country through to the end of next week. In the more extended range, we try to build up a little bit of a ridge across France ahead of this next area of low pressure that's deepening in the Atlantic. Probably pulling up some slightly warmer air from a southerly southwesterly direction early on uh, the following. So this takes us to day 10, which is Monday the 13th of May. Does look a little bit warmer there. Uh, with those winds coming up from the south. However, any attempt to build a ridge is very quickly flattened off as low pressure rolls back in from off the Atlantic. And that keeps us stuck in unsettled weather then through to the very end of this particular GFS run. So the GFS 6 o'clock operational run does keep us very uh, unsettled. And despite a little attempt to build a ridge at day 10, it doesn't really come to very much at all. This is the GFS parallel run. Again, we've got that blocking in place on Bank Holiday Monday. Should keep us mainly dry. The Bank Holiday Monday could be a few showers sparking up, but it should be mainly dry on Bank Holiday Monday. But it will still be quite chilly. And then as we go through next week, well, here comes the low pressure rolling in from the Atlantic underneath the block. Um, actually, wettest conditions like to be across England and Wales with that. Driest conditions up in the north. But all places probably getting rain through the middle and second half of next week. These unsettled conditions take us through into the end of next week and then again you see that little attempt to build up the ridge there as we head towards the 12th May. Now this is a better attempt at building the ridge so we have got an area of high pressure building there from the men up in towards Germany. Low pressure's out in the Atlantic and that is starting to suck up some really very warm air from the south actually. So a little bit of a Spanish plume here on the GFS 6 o'clock parallel run. That's probably the first Spanish plume of the season it's 10 days away, so it's a really long way out. And it is very, very flimsy. This ridge is quite weak. The low pressure in the Atlantic is pretty deep, 980 millibars. So it's a very, very sort of dodgy pattern to be bringing up uh, warmth from the south. But it does just about get there. If I show you the upper air temperature, you can see it's a real Spanish plume. Hot air pushing out of North Africa, France, up through uh, through. I should say, pushing out North Africa and Spain, up into France, and just about making it into the UK. It could certainly lift tension into V20 Celsius, possibly upper 20 Celsius, couldn't be ruled out. But you see that within about a day, we've uh, pushed all of that away, and we're back into this westerly flow. So it's only a one-day wonder, really. And you see that the hot, the warmer air temperatures by then, the hotter air temperatures are pushing away into the eastern part of Europe. Nevertheless, that's our first sort of Spanish plume of the season showing up on the uh, GFS parallel run. Uh, beyond that, where well, we go back into these cool and unsettled conditions, so that's also keeping us generally quite unsettled into the second half of May uh, parallel GFS run, along with the operational GFS 2. And then this is the ECMWF. Again, we've got these winds in from the north on that kind of Monday. And then after that, well, here comes a low pressure rolling in underneath the block. It's a classic setup, classic situation of high pressure up over here, low pressure setting up underneath it. Um, and uh, that's not what you want to see in the summer months, as I say. You get these uh, troughs stuck underneath the block for several days. In fact, it can go on for. Uh, for weeks even, in uh, the worst of our summers, thinking of summers like 1912 and 1956. They will nearly all have an element of northern blocking and they'll all tend to stick up that trough of low pressure within the 500 millibar flow underneath the block. Uh, heading into the XA range with the ECM, that's how it looks. So again, there's that ridge that's building across central parts of Europe. Low pressure is out to, out to the north and west. We're bringing up the wind from the south. It's only very temporary, I would have thought. But you can see warmer air is moving up from the south. Um, within a day, I suspect that ridge will collapse and the low pressure in the Atlantic just there will flatten it off and return us back to Wesley. But for one day, around the 13th of May, we might see quite a significant push-up in the temperature. 
Uh, this is how uh, the options that are on the table within the ECM ensembles are looking today. This is for day 10, which is uh, the 13th of May. We've got 51 out of 51 members of the ECM ensembles, that's 100%, including the uh, control and also the operation run. The operation run is run we're just looking at, of course, but have above average heights, kind of like over to the south southeast of the country and below average heights are out in the Atlantic. That will bring those warm southerly winds up towards us, but watch out for this low pressure rolling in and cutting off any southerly before it gets going, really. But we might get a push up in the temperature around the 13th of May. Uh, and then we go through to uh, two weeks away. These are the options that we've got. The 18th of May, 360 hours. We've got 19 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure out to Westward. So obviously they're quite unsettled, bringing in westerly winds. We've got 16, though, that have us under a, quite a big ridge of high pressure. So that's a much drier and potentially quite warm scenario with those 16. And then there's another 16 that have a trough of low pressure to our east. And still with a blocking signal, interestingly, up towards Greenland. They're unsettled, but they're also uh, really quite cool. They'll be bringing in winds from the north. That does include the ECM control run uh, as well. So I suppose if you was to put um, these 16 together with these 19 just here, you would probably say the ECM ensembles are favouring uh, fairly unsettled conditions in two weeks' time. The 16 that we've got here is a minority option to build in high pressure in uh in two weeks time but it's a fairly significant minority 16 is quite a high number out of 51 so we shall see about that uh finally we saw the cfs v2 is looking for june so I haven't looked at this uh, since we term the month of course so um this is the 700 millibar height anomaly from the cfs v2 for june and it looks quite blocked that isn't really what you want to be seeing for june i have to say a lot of high pressure going on there up towards Greenland. Uh, there's also high pressure you'll see or above average heights across eastern parts of Europe. So the warmth, the hot air with that would be in the east of Europe. We'd be bringing up southerly winds out of North Africa into eastern parts of Europe and western Russia. Uh, it doesn't show really a trough of low pressure underneath that high over Greenland, but you would have thought, because of the energy, again, that's available in the atmosphere in June, as the sun is rapidly warming the air, you would assume that would create instability. And so this area where the CFS has, has it white, has slight average heights, would probably in the end be filled up by a trough of low pressure uh, underneath the block. And so that would be a cool potentially very cool and quite unsettled sort of scenario. The temperature anomaly shows the heat in the east of Europe for June, uh, whereas in the west, in the west it's closer to average. But again, you'd have to probably think about it being rather cool, really. And precipitation-wise, again, no particular signal for precipitation there. But the height anomaly, the 700 bit of our height anomaly, is concerning uh, for June, unless you like cool uh, unsettled summer conditions, which a lot of people who are watching do actually like cool and unsettled conditions. A lot of people don't like hot weather. So if you like it cool and unsettled in the summer, that looks pretty good. Obviously very speculative. Finally, just say that if you are enjoying the uh, videos at the moment, please can you consider becoming a patron for Gazwell. We've got 60 patrons so far. Hello and a big thank you to all of Gazwell, these fabulous patrons. Uh, if you would like to become a patron of Gazwell, you just need to come to Gazwell's Patreon page, sign up for a patron account. And then you can uh, give a monthly donation to Gazwell. This could be anything from $1 a month upwards. It doesn't have to be a large amount of money whatsoever. Uh, and uh, by doing that, you become a patron of Gazo. We we'll give you a shout out in videos, say thank you very much, and you'll be helping us to fund our content and uh, keep the website online. Uh, you can also give one donation through PayPal. This is Gazo's PayPal page. 
So if you'd rather give a one-off donation, just come here to Gazzo's PayPal page. We'll link to both these pages on all the pages of Gazzo is and also in the description at YouTube. You just come here, you sign up, uh, or you sign in to your PayPal account, and uh, then you send a one-off donation to Gazzo is Again, you will get a mention in the earth, give a shout-out, say thank you very much for your uh, generosity. Unless you'd rather stay anonymous, in which case, leave a little note with your donation. And let us know that's what you want. And we'll still say thank you to this anonymous person, but we won't um, give out your name. But otherwise, you're going to mention the vids. And a uh, big thank you to all of patrons and donors uh, for Gazzler Vids. You are helping us to uh, fund the website, keep the website online, and uh, to keep churning out all of this content that hopefully you are all enjoying. Right, that's it for today's second video. We'll be back tonight with a final look at the May Day Bank Friday weekend in detail. And then loads of updates coming up over, week, over the um, weekend. It may be a Bank Friday weekend, but we never stop at Gazwell Vids. So we're going to have weekend forecasts tomorrow. We'll have your week to 10 day video update again with all of the usual features um, tomorrow. Also Sunday, more summer analogues on the way. Had a look at uh, those already. Uh, and they are quite interesting. So more of those coming up on Sunday. Sunday, as well as the Gazzo Vids Sunday Roundup. And uh, on top of all of that, we'll have the Bank Holiday Monday Historic Video, which will be a direct follow-on from the last uh, Bank Holiday Monday Historic Video. That was on Easter Monday, and it was looking at the winter of 2017-18, including the beasts from the east. We'll pick up exactly where we left off uh, with that one, and we will go through the remainder of the spring and also the very hot summer of 2018 for your May Day Bank Holiday Monday historic video. Right, come back in a couple of hours for the uh, final update for May Day Bank Holiday Weekend, but that's all for now, and thanks for watching.